hello guys welcome back to my channel i hope you're doing good because i'm doing great as you guys can see in today's video i'm going to be talking about how to choose your domestic help or things to do when getting a domestic help so that you can get the best out of your domestic help okay yes you know domestic help assistant whatever you want to call them okay how to basically treat them or what to do or things to put in place so that you can get the best out of them and you can weed out the bag without the bad eggs as soon as possible so the first thing to do before you get a domestic help is to get cctv i cannot overemphasize this okay i don't know how you know a lot of people do but me i have trust issues okay i admit it i have trust issues so there's no way i could have stayed you know had kids and have someone look after my kids without having cameras in my house okay so just try and get cctv in fact that's the first help that you need the first domestic help you need is cctv okay try and get cctv in your house they are affordable ones you can just put them in certain sensitive areas okay and let anybody coming into your house know that there is cctv in your house i don't understand people that say that they don't even let you know people know that they have cctv in their house so that they can catch them i don't want to catch anybody doing anything to my kids i don't want to catch anybody in the act don't even try it okay so anybody coming into my house i let them know from the get-go that we have cctv in this house and i monitor everything that happens in this house okay in fact in front of you i'm going to open it and show you things that have happened before then okay so you will just know that you are being watched at any time and anything you do is going to be seen okay people say things like oh what if they carry them to the toilet where there's no cctv or to blind spots and i will see you carrying my child to a blind spot and you will explain to me why you're carrying to my child why you're carrying my child to a blind spot and what you are doing in that blind spot okay so there is no excuse whatsoever not to let your domestic help or domestic staff know that there is cctv in your house there's no excuse whatsoever okay when i see people catching you know you want do you want to catch somebody killing your child do you want to catch somebody poisoning your child do you want to catch somebody sexually harassing your child or molesting your child no i don't catch anybody doing that okay don't even attempt it now the second thing is to start early when looking for a domestic staff okay or a domestic help start early you don't want to be desperate when looking for them because when you are desperate when desperation has entered in you are going to see yourself accepting just anybody into your home because at that point you desperately need that help so if you're a newlywed you're a new couple and you know sometime in the future you know that you're going to need domestic help now is the best time to start okay if you because most people don't need help until they get pregnant and start having kids okay so once you find out that you are pregnant that is the time that you should start looking for help okay it doesn't mean that the person must resume immediately it doesn't mean that the person must you know for me the person should even resume immediately so that you have enough time to vet the person and probably kick the person out and get somebody else okay <laughs> yes to me that's how it should be so you need to start early the moment you discover that oh i'm going to need domestic help in the nearest future or, or at any point in time start now to look for because first of all it's not easy to get you know domestic help and it's not easy to get good ones okay actually the bad ones are easy to guess because they are always jumping from house to house they're always being chased away from other houses so the earlier you start the earlier you vet these people the earlier you look into their life and their history the better for you okay now the third thing to do when you when you get somebody is to interview the person always interview the staff that comes to your house okay anybody coming to your house to look for a job it doesn't matter the kind of job okay gates man a cleaner um, house help whatever it is that the person is coming chef okay whatever they're coming to do in your house make sure you ask questions okay it is not enough to rely on who brought them okay because sometimes if somebody you know or somebody you trust brings them you now just let things go or just accept the person into your house without really vetting them no it is very wrong okay because that person who even brought them might not even know them very well it happens some people use agencies these agencies don't know these people very well many of them don't do serious vetting they just accept them because they need their own courts okay so if you're getting through agency if you're getting to somebody that you know or someone that you trust make sure you do your own vetting make sure you ask pertinent questions okay what made you leave your place of work your former place of work what made you leave home why do you want to become a help what is your primary purpose what is your driving force okay i don't even want people lying to me i know you're here because of the money not many, how many people go through life dreaming of becoming domestic help okay how many people go through life dreaming of being a nanny they are very 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 minute okay and maybe not even in this part of the world because in this part of the world they deal with them very well i'm not even going to lie they deal with domestic staff very well so i don't think anybody you know woke up and that was a person's dream so ask questions how long do you want to stay okay ask these questions ask them tell them to be free with you be open with you 
ask them what okay how's your father how's your mother where are you from okay and verify some of these things because some people just ask questions for the sake of asking it verify some of these things okay if you can get family members of this your staff if you can get you know relatives or friends of, of these people ask them questions try and know pertinent things about these people try and ask them some tricky questions to understand you know who they are i ask people that come into my house what is your weakness what is your what is your what is that bad thing about you that people complain about a lot let me know tell me it doesn't mean i'm going to chase you away from my house it just means that i'm going to be aware of it okay and you'll be surprised at how much they will open up to you if you really calm down and ask them very well okay so i ask them what is that thing about you that is a bad side about you that you are working on or people complain about a lot or even if you don't see it as a bad side what do people complain about a lot concerning you either people that have lived with you or your mom your parents your siblings what is that thing ask them questions when they answer you based on how they answer even when they lie okay even when they omit the truth even when they avoid certain things it tells you more about that person okay some people that when i ask them they will give me one fluffy answer like this and i just know that okay that means you are lying that means you are not ready to admit the truth that means you're not ready to accept the your your downside so it's a red flag to me why some people come out open mouth why and tell me so much about themselves i'm like oh more this person talks too much <laughs> you know it doesn't mean i'm going to send you back it just means that i now know you better okay especially when your downside is not something evil okay maybe you are you you get angry easily or you know you you tend to be lazy sometimes or you tend to be forgetful or you tend to you know panic too much or, or things like that it now means that i now know how to handle you because everybody has their flaws okay trust me you're not going to get anybody that is flawless if you do, then it's either you're being blind or the person is a master manipulator, which is still a flaw. Ask this pertinent question so that it will help you and guide you when it comes to, you know, choosing the right person for your home. Okay, based on what they answer, they might be the right fit for you or they might not be. So you don't have to accept anybody that comes into your house because you're, and that's why you have to start early so that you're not desperate when you're looking for them, okay? And as much as you're not desperate, it doesn't now mean that you will now just be chasing everybody away because if you're looking for perfection like i said you are going to you're going to be disappointed okay okay now when you eventually find the right person for your home the person that you feel is okay and can blend into your home make sure you give them your ground rules some people don't have ground rules some people don't have any rules some people are just going with the flu some people don't even have what to you know ex what they expect from their health they just expect everything and anything no you have to give the person your ground rules you have to give first of all give person their job description okay and i'm going to get more into that you know, later on but give them their job description this is what i expect you to do every single day or once a week or twice a week or whatever map out their work for them let them know what their work is supposed to be so that when they don't do it then they you know that they knew not the one that you didn't let them know when they not now do it you now got angry what are you getting angry for you didn't tell them what they're supposed to do okay so let them know exactly what they're supposed to do in your house what their roles are where their job roles stop okay the end of their job roles and you should know about it okay that's one and then two for me i'm going to give you some of my rules i think i even wrote them down okay some of my rules is that if you steal anything from me okay you are going to police station first like i'm not even going to hear sorry you eh, eh, eh. if you steal anything from me because i don't like people that steal if i find out that something is missing from my house something you know something is missing from my house that you stole police station straight you go there and go and answer it will help you reset your brain I mean, of course, we know that with bail, they're going to come out the next day or whatever, but you will first reach there. Even if you don't get, you know, put in, in jail, you will first reach police station and you can answer yourself there, okay? So I let them know, ho ha, because these people are going to be living in your house. So you need to let them know that you're not going to steal from you and get and go scot free. Like, you are going to get punished for it one way or the other, okay? Now, the second one is if you beat or hurt my child, I am going to come for you, okay? If you beat or hurt my child, just know that you're going to get time stand of what to met out on my child, okay? And these are my own rules, though. When you get to your own house, when you get to your own domestic staff, okay, you can give them whatever freedom you want to give them. It is your own prerogative, okay? But for me and my household, I always let them know, nobody has the right to spank my child. I don't care who you are. You do not have the right to spank my child. I always tell them, it doesn't mean that you should allow my children to get away with things, okay? Report to me. Reprimand them, okay? Stop them from doing things that are wrong, okay? Don't, don't give them the freedom to do whatever they want to do. However, do not beat. I always say it. I always repeat it. I say, if you beat my child, I go fling you come off from my house. Like from the upstairs window, upstairs the balcony, I'm going to fling you out. <laughs> 
you know i don't mean literally but i mean don't beat my child because let me tell you something some of you have that be like oh i don't care if you beat my child just don't hurt my child you don't know where they are coming from you don't know how they we are disciplined some people believe in using hot hot water to point each other as discipline or pouring hot water on each other as discipline some people believe in putting pepper in a child's eyes as, as discipline and they won't let you know these things until one day you see your child with, with scars or you see pepper in your child's eye or you see your child you know beating to pop you'll not be like uh, uh why did you do this now no don't even don't try to discipline my child for me that's why i'm there thank god i'm a stay at home mom thank god i'm at home two four almost two four seven okay most times when anything is going wrong in this house i know <laughs> i know if i'm filming video now and i hear somebody crying yeah i will run and go and meet them what is happening uh, cora did this eva did that sophia did that okay i'll reprimand them myself I'm, I'm i'm at home okay if i'm not at home wait when i come back you start it up you bring it up again you know bring up the matter run, write it down so you won't forget okay or text me immediately so you won't forget just do not beat my child anything to not beat my child please do it okay if it means leaving that place if it means removing yourself from the situation please don't touch my child i always I'm, anyway i said too much about that point okay now the next one is if you want anything i don't care what it is please ask i always tell them no matter what it is you want in this house ask me I'll, if i don't have the money to do it for you i'll find a way to do something close to that thing i'll find a way to help you achieve it okay anything you need anything you want just ask me if you even want to you know take something from the house you know that's why i said that that's why i don't tolerate stealing because anything you ask me for if i can give it to you i'll give it to you i mean i think you of my kids you're thinking of my kids are living in my house you're thinking of my home you're helping me you know achieve my dreams okay so anything you want anything you ask me for if i can give it to you trust me i'm going to give it to you if i cannot give it to you i'll give you the next best thing if i cannot give you the next best thing i will, I will help you achieve that thing or i'll help you get that thing that you want your own way okay but please do not steal please do not go over my head and do some things you know i always let them know that i'm not a wicked person no. like anything you want no matter how how it sounds because because some people where they're coming from based on their past experiences they are scared to ask for certain things i tell you no you can ask me if you see anything that's another point another rule that i have okay if you want anything in this house like maybe oh you see drinks you see um, you know snacks whatever it is you want ask me if it's not for anybody specific take it i don't care what you want to eat in this house like i, I don't differentiate oh i'll eat this they will eat that I, I, no you are free to even go and sell food from my pot like i've never i've never maybe at the beginning stages maybe like those first few days when you come into my house and you don't really know how things are done i might you know serve them after like two or three days or more collect food by yourself do whatever you want to do eat whatever you want to eat cook whatever, cook whatever you want to cook as long as you know there's no food in the house like for instance if there's no food or there's maybe it's only the children's soup that is remaining because sometimes we just cook soup for the children and the rest of us just freestyle it okay if it's only children's soup that is remaining and you are hungry Cook whatever it is you want to cook. In fact, if it's delicious enough, I go, I go follow you, chop up. Okay, so I give them that much freedom because we are helping my children. I, I, close, I sleep and close eye when you are with my children. I leave you with my children at home. So what is my pot? What is provisions? What is food? You know? And don't waste my food, okay? Because some people, oh, because I said take whatever you want. You now go and cook one big pot of rice, eat half and throw away half. No, don't waste my food, okay? Whatever it is you take, you must finish it. Whatever it is you are giving and you, you know you collect, you must finish it too. I don't want to see some in the fridge, some in the dustbin, some inside the sink. Eh eh. Okay, so that's just don't be wasteful, but whatever it is you want, take it. Another rule for me is that you must have a plan for your life. You must have a plan. You must have an end date for when you are going to be in my house. You must have a next stage. You can't, nobody's coming to my house to come and stay forever. Mm -mm, I'm, there's, there's no plan like that. That's not a plan. That, oh, I like you so much. I want to come and be your helper. No, 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 no. That's not a plan, okay? I don't, it's, to me, it's not a good thing. It's not, don't think that I'll be happy because for selfish reasons, I'll not live in my house. No, 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 no. It's not a good thing, no. Hey, hey. If I come to my house and I ask question for plan for your life and you're like, eh, I'm, I just want to serve you. I just want to be there for you. You go come out. So I'm not going to take you because for me it is not a good thing it means that you're not ambitious it means that you're not a good influence on my kids you're going to be with my kids so if you don't have any plan for your life you're going to be a fool, a fool. <laughs> nobody should be a household forever okay no matter how much you're being paid nobody should be a household forever except you are you are paid millions or something nobody should be a household forever okay so it, my house is just a stepping stone for you to achieve greater things in life so let us know what is your plan for your life oh you, you want to go to school okay i'll help you go to school oh you, you want to start a business you want to start a you know you want to learn handwork you want to whatever okay i'm going to help you okay so maybe oh you work for one year straight without doing anything and then the next year we we'll start working that's what, that's what happened with most of my helps anyway for one year they work straight for just you know without doing anything and then they 
the following year, they must start something. Amarachi now is in school, and Elizabeth is either going to be going to school or doing business. We're not yet sure of that right now. It was supposed to be school, though, but it's like she has changed her mind. But that's story for another day, okay? But you must have a plan for your life. You must have a stepping stone. If you don't have, I'm going to ask you. If you don't say it, I'm going to ask you. Because I always wait for them to sit on their own. But when they don't say it, I'll not be like, hello. <laughs> hello. They have stayed one year. Okay? What's next? Okay? Because at the end of the day, it gives me joy to see them progressing in life. And not just for them. Not just because, you know, I like them or whatever. I want them to, you know, progress. I want my kids to have people to look up to. So you can't come and live in my house and, you know, take care of my kids. And my kids will, will like you and want to, to, you know, have a relationship with you. And you are a nobody or you are, or you are going nowhere fast. No. I don't want that kind of situation in my house. So I always ask them for their plan for their lives. And I always remind them. Don't think that when you come the first day and you give me one, you know, build castles in the air. Then three years, four years, five years, I still in my house. They are still building those castles. Some bow you will come and be going okay you are gonna be going because i know i'm going to do my best to help you achieve your dream so if you're not going to achieve them then please come and exit for another person that can come and achieve their own dreams okay because i have so much to offer to anybody that comes into my house that you can't come and waste it like onto the next okay i can laugh with you i can joke with you but respect is respect you are going to respect me as your boss because as much as i am your boss if i wasn't your boss i'm not your mates okay i'm not your mates <laughs> and i'm still your boss on top so you are going to respect me now I'm not saying you're going to fear me, okay? Because that's where some people get it wrong. I don't want you to fear me. I don't want you to see me and start shaking and, you know, you can't talk. When I ask questions, you can't talk. No, no, no. I want us to talk as... Because, again, I don't go for kids. That's another point, okay? I don't go for kids. I go for mature people, right? So you are mature enough to talk to me as a mature person just don't disrespect me or disrespect yourself because you can't even disrespect me it's yourself you're going to be disrespecting if you try nonsense and i'm going to put you in your place okay so yeah if you see me and my girls laughing you will think that oh that's how we laugh all the time yes we laugh all the time more, but when it comes to matters of you know being serious everybody knows where they cannot cross i'm not even a very um what do you call it laughy person in a normal day like you can't laugh with me anyhow that's my point <laughs> You can't joke with me anyhow. Like, you should know what is respect, respectful and acceptable, okay? As much as I'm free with you, I'm laughing with you, I'm joking with you, you should also have respect for yourself, not even me. Another one is if you want to leave, okay? If you are done with, you know, here, if maybe this person is not for you, maybe you stay a few months and you feel like, ah, I don't really like this house, I don't like this woman, I don't like anything she's doing, I want to go. It's okay. I don't have a problem with anybody Stay. I always say that I don't beg anybody to stay in my house. Like, I can't beg anybody to stay in my house because I know what I have to offer to you. Like, I know, <laughs> you are very fortunate to be in my house. My mom even used to say it. Like, anybody that sits in, in her children's houses, those people are very fortunate. And it's not because, oh, we are angels. It's just because she knows that we are good people that will always have your best interests as heart okay so if you come into my house and whatever i'm doing for you is not good enough for you and you want to leave just let me know that you want to leave let it be done in a very nice good way it's for your own benefit as well if you leave my house in a peaceful way okay and so far somehow i don't know whether to say i've been lucky because people keep telling me oh you're lucky which helps i don't say i've been lucky i feel like some of these things that i do is actually what makes things easier for me and those and for people that come to work for me as well okay so i've not really had a bad person in my house I've just had people that, you know, maybe at some point I, I saw that it things were not going to work out between me and them. Then the person that had spiritual problem, in fact, two people that I feel had spiritual problem, those ones, it wasn't the work itself. It was just those other things that I, I was like, hmm, nobody from my house will come manifest to come and be going, you know. Yeah, but I've not really had like a lazy person or a bad person in my house, okay. It's just people that have personal issues. It might not even be spiritual. It might be schizophrenia. I've been a mental illness. I don't even know. But it's not, it's not in my house. I'm going to come and manifest it, okay? Go and seek help outside, okay? Now, aside from those general rules, you also need to have, like, specific rules when it comes to, you know, their day-to-day -day activities, okay? So, for me, one of those activities is that you must wake up by 5 a.m., have your bath, dress well, smell good before you come out of your room, Okay? It is a room, thank God all the rooms here are uh, uh, sweet, okay? So everybody, every room has their, you know, bathroom and toilet and everything, okay? So once you wake up in the morning, wake up by 5 a.m. 5 a.m. is a must, okay? In fact, I've had helps that I told 5 a.m. It's here waking up by 4 a.m. I'm like, 
what's happening here, okay? Some of them prefer 4 a.m., but me, 5 a.m. is okay, right? And I'm not just doing it because it benefits me. I'm doing it because it benefits you as a person. So, once you wake up by that 5 a.m., because my kids go to school by 7 a.m., so, you know, you need to have finished doing your own thing and taking care of yourself at least before 6 o'clock, before we now start, you know, getting the kids ready for school and all that, and they leave by 7. Okay, so, when you wake up by 5 a.m., Every day, whether Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, whatever the day is, you must wake up by 5 a.m., you must have your bath, you must dress well, and I don't have uniforms or anything, or it doesn't make sense to me, but you must dress well, and you must spray perfume, you must smell good before you step out of your room, okay? No matter what you are doing that day, I don't care if you are going to clean the house that day, when you finish cleaning the house, if you sweat, you go and bath again, okay, if you have to. But yeah, for me, it is a must. And one thing I've realized that that thing does to them is, first of all, it makes them up and doing. Because even as a human being, it's not even about them. Even as a human being too, if you wake up early in the morning, have your bath and dress up, tendency for you to be lazy is very, very, very low. Very, especially if you're sick or something. Like, you're, I mean, I mean like, like you're sick, you're literally not feeling fine. That's when you can, you can now start becoming lazy again. But tendency for you to become lazy after you've had your bath dressed up, you know, smells good, is very low. You see yourself up and doing. So that's why I always tell them, have your bath, get ready. Okay, I don't even want you to be smelling and be taking care of my kids in the morning or, or bathing my kids while you've not had your bath. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. After you've done all the work that you need to do, most times... Once my kids go to school, after like one hour, because once I, once I drop my kids at school and come back, you know, maybe they are, they are cleaning one or two places in the room because they, we have a cleaner, but she doesn't clean the rooms. You know, so maybe they just clean the rooms, they pack dirty clothes and stuff like that, or, you know, bringing clothes. By nine o'clock, they are done with the day's activities. You see them sleeping, you see them, you know, chatting, playing, doing whatever they want to do. Till two o'clock when my kids come back from school, okay, or till, no, not two, till around maybe... 12-ish, when they have to start preparing lunch or start, you know, doing some other work before my kids come back from school, okay? So, you have a lot of free time to sleep back if you want to. Most of them even sleep back, okay? You have a lot of free time to sleep back if you want to sleep back. You have a lot of free time to do things for yourself if you want to do things for yourself, okay? So, that is why that 5 a.m. waking up is very important for me. Finish all your work. By 8 a.m., 9 a.m., you are free. Except I call you for one or two things, which I really, I really do during the day. It's usually in the evening I need them more. You're free, okay? You must dress well at all times. Those are the like day to day rules. You must dress well at all times. I don't want to see anybody wearing sexy nightgown in my house. It's not because, oh, I'm done with my husband. Whether I'm around, whether my husband's around or not, in fact, it's not even around most of the times, okay? So, whether it's around or not, it's not about my, my husband, it's not about anything. Respect yourself, okay? Dress well. I always buy pajamas for them. So, it's either the pajama trousers on top or pajama gowns, but you must dress well at all times, okay? You cannot be walking around in my house braless. It doesn't make sense to me. I won't do it in another person's house. It's not even about the person's husband or the person's relative or whatever. I won't do it in any other person's house. You won't see me walking about in somebody's house without bra. Okay, so when I go to some people's houses and I see their hair walking about without bra, I'm just like, it doesn't even look good. Even for me as a woman, it looks weird for me seeing another woman walking up, walking up and down without bra during the day. Like, it's not even like at night and I enter your bedroom or just around in the house walking up without bra. Some people without pants. Some people wearing short, very short, you know. I'm just like, no, it's, it's not right. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe people will think, oh, you're being insecure. That's your business, okay? But it is not right. Dress well at all times, okay? It's even for your own good. Always finish your work, then go and enjoy yourself. In fact, before, in my former house, okay, I still them to keep the their phones in the room okay just put your ringtone at the highest keep your phone in the room and go and do your work once you're done with your work you can go and stay on your phone i don't care what you're doing on your phone you can stay on your phone all day except i mean if you don't have any work to do but keep your phone in the room while i'm doing the work because i don't like when i see somebody doing work with one hand and pressing phone with another hand like eh, who do you think you are <laughs> What do you think is happening here? You know, it, it annoys me. But for, for the people I have now, funny enough, I've never, I've never really seen them doing that, even though they don't keep their phones in their room. I don't really see them, you know, pressing phone and doing their work. No, the highest thing they do is play music on their phone while doing their work, which I don't have a problem with, except the music is too loud and I'm filming, okay? But as I don't have a problem with you play music on your phone or watch something on your phone while you're doing your work, okay? But not that you're, you're on a call. Why are you supposed to be doing something? Maybe food is burning on a call, eh? What's happening here? You know, so... Um, but finish your work, then enjoy yourself. Once I see that your work is done, I'm not going to disturb you. I'm not a witch, okay? Like, you are free to enjoy yourself when you want to enjoy yourself. Me, self, I like to enjoy myself when I'm free, okay? So, another one is don't over fraternize with workmen in my house. <laughs> you see all this, oh, plumber came, electrician came, eh, eh, gets man, this one. And then you now feel the need to go and be laughing with them anyhow. Can be just with them anyhow. They'll be asking you out if you do, <laughs> leave me alone, leave me alone. All those things. No, it is prohibited, strictly prohibited. Like, 
I even had a case one time that eh, the way I reacted, I'm sure they didn't even expect it. Like, what are you over fraternizing with workmen in the house for? Like, what is the meaning of that? What's that supposed to mean? Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. No matter how you are getting tempted, don't do it. Don't over fraternize with other people in the house for safety reasons, first of all, for even your own safety reasons. Because you don't know these people where they're coming from. That I brought him as electrician doesn't mean that I, I know him from anywhere. Don't tempt the devil, okay? Don't don't give the devil space. So anybody that comes to work in this house, be very formal with them. Because they are, I didn't say you should be rude to them. Be formal with them, but I mean respect yourself, okay? Respect yourself. Another thing I always say to women, okay, or people that want to hire domestic staff, even men, do not hire underage people. Like why on earth will you be bringing a child to come and take care of your children? Do not hire underage people. Like, it doesn't make any sense. You say, oh, the person is coming to go to school. Except you are bringing the person into your house as your, you are a guardian to the person, right? Which is a different case. And in that case, there are some jobs they cannot do. What you cannot send your child, don't send them to do it. Okay, so don't hire any underage staff, okay? For me, ideal age is from 18 and above. But you can make exceptions for 16, 17 if the person has finished secondary school, okay, because for me, that is a big rule in my house. You must have finished secondary school. Don't come and be going to school for my house. No, it's not my house. I'm going to do that one, okay? Make sure you have finished secondary school. If you have not finished, I will allow you to go and finish. When you finish secondary school, then you cannot come to my house, okay? So, from 16 and above is okay, but that 16-year-old must have finished school, okay? And that 16-year-old, you're not going to give them job or give them work like like a 20 year old okay so give them appropriate jobs okay so for a 16 year old in my house or a 17 18 year old in my house you are just doing the kind of work i would have done in my father's house at 16 17 18 okay i'm not going to bring you to my house and now come and make you you know the head uh, 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 chief inspector or chief or whatever head head help in my house okay you are only going to be here to assist me with certain things which i would have done in my own parents house at that age okay so i won't bring it to my house and some people will bring children to their house not even this one people say 16 17 16 17 are even old some people will bring 10 year olds 11 years in their house and turn those 11 year olds to you know overseer of their houses like the 11 year old will go to market for you will cook for you will clean the house will, no that's wrong i have big girls in my house now they are, they are way over 18 but i still have a cleaner okay I still have a cleaner. Not now, not everybody can afford, you know, to have a cleaner. But if you can afford to have a big house, you can afford to have a cleaner. Okay, if you can afford to buy or rent or build a big house, then you can afford to have a cleaner. Okay, so you cannot just bring one person into your house or two people in your house and then you have a very big house and expect them to do all that work themselves. It is not fair. Don't give people more than they can handle. That is where you know they start wanting to leave they start feeling bad they start feeling overworked you start stressing them they start dropping the ball on so many things because they're overworking them so don't overwork them because they're paying them how much how much are hell paid in nigeria they're not paid enough i don't think me and my husband always you know try to remember remind ourselves my husband says it a lot says it a lot that these people are not paid enough for the jobs that they do and that is why we always ask them for something extra that they want to do with their life so that we we'll help them achieve those things because Yes, I pay them, but I'm not paying them enough as far as I'm concerned, okay? So, that is why we always do something extra for them. So, is that why I'm putting you through school or doing business for you or something else, you know, to help you achieve? That's the only way we can repay you for what you've done for us. For me, that monthly payment is not it, okay? For my, peop for my people in my house, I pay them monthly, but the money I pay them monthly is not what they used to live. I still do other things for them, like their toiletries and stuff like that or whatever else they want to do. I still do it for them, even aside what they are being paid, so they don't have to touch their money, Okay? The only time they touch their money is if they want to send money home to somebody or they want to send money, somebody asks them for money and they want to send money. That's the only time I take out from their own money and, you know, send to that person. And the reason why I do that is so that you will not go there and turn to, uh, I'm now in the better place, so I'm now free to be giving my money anyhow. No, better know how, when, I, when you remove 20k from your money, know how much is left so that when anybody's asking you for money, you will know how to shape your mouth and tell the person no. Okay, or if you want to accept, you accept for only reasonable requests because this money is not, uh, it's not, it's not never ending. Like it has an end. You know that's why I always take from their money when they ask, they want to give more some money to somebody, want to send money to somebody. Okay, no wahala, I'm going to give you that money, but I'm going to take from your money and give that person. So you will know in tangible terms how much you are making and how much you are letting go of. So if you now decide to give out all your money, now you sabi, okay. That's only when they use their money for something. Um, yeah, so do not overwork them. These are people's children. These are human beings. Do not overwork them. If one person is not, if the work is too much for one person, get two people, okay? If the work is too much for two people, get three people. Just 
or reduce the work or do some of them yourself okay don't just bring people into your house and then leave them to do everything while you're just there looking like uh, this thing you're not paying them enough for that the next one is give them some independence okay privacy freedom autonomy whatever give them some independence there's some things that i allow my girls to make decisions on not because i can't make the decision but just so that they feel among okay <laughs> they feel included they feel part of the family okay so sometimes i ask them what are we eating this afternoon what are we eating this night? It's not like I cannot tell them what I want us to eat or what I want us to do. But I ask them, so they make this, oh, let us eat spaghetti. We'll cook spaghetti. They feel like they're part of the house. They're part of the collective. They are contributing to the collective. They're not just, you know, workmen being told what to do. They are also, what their, their, their opinion is, 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 is important, okay? I always ask them things like, oh, should we go out? Should we go to market? What, what are we going to eat? Should we buy this for the kids? It's not like I cannot make those decisions for myself. Like I said, it's just that I need them to be, you know, to feel among, okay? Now, freedom in terms of let, allow them go out. Allow them have friends. Allow them let their friends come and visit. Okay, the same kind of freedom you give your kids is the same kind of freedom you should give to these people, okay? Because again, they are human beings. They're living their families. They're living their lives, whatever they knew before, to come and stay in your house. Do not cage them too much. If you cage them too much, you will see them wanting to leave. Even the good ones will want to leave because they don't have that freedom. I'm not asking them, oh, who are you talking to on the phone? Why are you talking? Don't talk to anybody on the phone. No, I let them have their freedom. I just advise them so that they make the best decisions for themselves so they make informed decisions so they don't they don't you know act stupid but i allow them you know go out go and buy something by I, I can send them out to go and buy stuff so they can they can you know relate to other people outside if they say oh my friend wants to come and visit me my sister wants to come and visit me let the person come and visit it's even better for me to even know who your friends are who your sisters sisters are who your relatives are it's better for me okay so give them some freedom some level of, i'm not saying too much freedom i'm not saying allow them bring boys into your house okay anyway everybody has sense you know where you should stop okay but give them some level of freedom it will help them stay longer in your house you know once because they, they don't feel like they're missing much outside there they, they won't feel like they're missing much so it will make them stay longer with you allow them take food by themselves okay if you have someone that is sensible the person will not will not uh, uh, overeat your food i don't know i let them take food from the pot i let them serve themselves i let them cook for themselves okay now not everybody can it might not work for everybody but for me it works for me i allow them my bag what are you what are you policing you're allowing them to do whatever they want with your children but when that comes to food and now they're policing it no allow them please okay um, let them wear what they want. I don't really tell them what they should wear. Just be decent, okay? So I don't choose clothes for you and say, today you must wear this, except when they're dressed anyhow. I'm not going to choose the clothes for them. But most times, I don't allow them wear whatever they want to wear. They might even come and ask me, did you like this one? And my mind, I'm like, this cloth looks ridiculous. And I'll be like, mm, you can't change it, you know? Or why don't you wear something else, you know? But I allow them wear what they want to wear. Like I said, we don't do uniforms here. Um, don't ask them too many questions. Who are you talking to? What I mm -mm. There's some things I just let go of, okay? Even when I hear some certain things and I'm like, it's pinching me to go and ask, you know, the, I'm a boy and you will be pinching you. Let it go, okay? You don't have to know everything about everything about them, okay? The same way to be, you will feel uncomfortable if the person you're living with is always, or if you're even pay parent yourself are asking you about everything. The same way you feel uncomfortable is the way they will feel uncomfortable again. So I'll let some things go. Let them have some freedom for themselves. It doesn't mean that because you hear somebody saying something on the phone, you're not going to ask person, what are you saying on the phone? Who are you talking to? What, did they, what was that about? No, except you hear something dangerous or something that feels, sounds dangerous at hand. But when it's just normal banter, normal talk, let it go, okay? Appreciate, ah, this is, this is more than one video. Oh, my video is very long. Appreciate a work well done, okay? Appreciate it. Me, I give them a college, though. I even say, hey, tell him, oh, more you try to do. Oh, more. If not for you, this thing won't be like this. Ah, if not for you, it's you that saved the day. I appreciate, appreciate them, okay? Dash them money. I dash them money a lot, okay? If you do something nice and I'm, I'm feeling good and I have extra money, I dash them money. Even though I do a lot for them without their salary, okay, without, without allowing them to touch their salary, I still dash their money on top, okay, because again, human beings love pets, human beings love being appreciated, so appreciate them, okay, okay, make sure your kids and other people in the house respect them. Make sure your kids respect them, okay, all this Mr. Marachi, Mr. Libra that I, I wish them to say is not because of anything it's just so that there's just that respect of this person is not my mate, okay, so if you come and tell me I to hey. One of the things I hate the most is when Cora disrespects any of them because Cora is getting to that stage where she knows what she wants, you know, so she, sometimes she can be disrespectful. I caution her straight. I nip it in the bud straight. I tell her to apologize there in my presence, okay? Because what I won't like, I won't like my child to do to another person, okay? 
So allow and even other staff in the house. So if I hear that one person is disrespecting, is disrespecting the other person, I caution it too. I stop. I nip it in the bud there. Okay. If I hear that oh the guestman or the people workmen or whatever disrespects you know my staff. I nip it in the bud there. I address it there, okay? Because I don't want you to feel undermined in my house. I don't want you to feel disrespected in my house. So that if you now want to bring disrespect to me, then you are, will know where it is coming from. We will understand where exactly that is coming from, okay? Now, be interested in their growth and their development, okay? It is very important. I've talked about it before. Be interested. When they know that you are interested in their growth and, and development, they in turn are interested in doing more for you. Okay, so even for selfish reasons, if you don't want to do it because I, because of uh, because of God, do it for selfish reasons. Be interested in their growth, be interested in their development, do things for them to become better people in life. They are always going to thank you for it, and you are going to benefit from it. Okay, if tomorrow now Cora is going to school and she calls Miss Lizzie up and she's like, Miss Lizzie, you know, I'm going back to school, and Miss Lizzie dashes that like, you know, hundred k, two hundred k, like, it, 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 will she die? <laughs> You know, it's a good thing either way. It's a good thing if my kids have them as aunties in the future. Like that's my auntie, that's my that's my you know my big sister, that's my auntie. It you will not die, okay? You, you you can only benefit from me. That is why you should be interested in the development. It will be really sad if they take care of your children and finish and they end up back in the village or they end up in in the trenches or they end up in uh, in, in 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 the ghetto. It is really in, in fact it's a, it's a disappointment. It is a colossal disappointment, colossal failure on your part if that happens, okay? Be interested in their family. Ask them about their family. How's your mom? How's your dad? How's your this? How's your that? Ask them about them if they need help. You know, help them in some help them. Some some of their problems which is not your business to solve okay help them solve those problems you they will thank you for it they will forever be grateful for it okay be interested in their love life their romantic lives okay be interested that's why i ask them do you want to get married do you have a boyfriend let me know for your own way i'm not going to stop you i mean i know that this things this things i know that you are doing these things already okay but let me just know to advise you better and doesn't mean you must take my advice you don't have to take my advice but at least let me know what is going on with you. If I can advise you, I'll advise you. If I cannot advise you, then, you know, at least let me just know, okay? Now, be very tolerant, okay? Be very tolerant. Some people see us and be like, oh my God, you're so lucky, you're so lucky. If I tell you some of the things that they do, eh, you, will, you, will, you will fly. You will, you will say unbelievable. You will shout. You will hold your head. You will, hold, you will clutch your pearls if I tell you some of the things that they've done to me or they do, okay? However, I'm not chasing them out of my house for those things because these are human mistakes. You didn't raise these people yourself, okay? So there are so many things, so many baggages they come with that they will only drop over time. So if you, if you chase each person away based on how they manifest some of those baggages, you are going to be lonely, you are going to need help, you are going to always be chasing people away. Your house, is going to, your house is going to be like a train station. People are just going to be coming and going, coming and going from your house if you chase everybody away because of some of the things they manifest, okay? So I have deal breakers, like I've mentioned before. I have deal breakers, but every other thing is tolerable, okay? As long as you are doing your work well, as long as you are open to corrections, as long as you are you're growing from it, you are learning from it, you are changing, so many things are very tolerable, okay? But at the same time, don't be stupid, okay? It doesn't now mean that you should allow any and everything for, you know, to happen in your house, no, okay? But at the same time, like, if they make some mistakes, let it go. Overlook some things, okay? Caution and just move on. Don't now dwell on it or start reminding them of it. No, caution and move on, okay? Don't go back to their past mistakes. Don't keep mentioning it. Don't keep, you know, um, hammering on some things that they do. Because, again, these people have, you know different lives from you some of you you know you grew up with so much privilege okay so much so many privileges that now you can't even see past your privilege okay so sometimes try and see past your privilege um things that they do now i'm just like i won't have done things this way but i know that i was raised differently so i can only advise you on how to behave going forward and once the person has a teachable spirit okay once the person has a teachable spirit and that's one thing i always look out for like the girls i have now they have a very teachable spirit okay they have changed so much from when they came so once the person has a teachable spirit just let go of some things okay you will not die not everything that you must talk about and, and, and as, as long as they're not deal breakers okay so for me if they break a major rule if they show signs that they're not happy please come and be going now hey if after everything I've done for you in this life, you're not happy, please come and be going. No, 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 no. I can't beg anybody to stay in my house. I'm sorry. So if you're not happy, come and be going to give another person the chance. Okay, like it's not it's not a do or die. Like no, it's not by force. You can it's okay. You can be going. Okay. If they show signs that they're not happy, if they are unappreciative, okay, because some people are just 
evil, they will never appreciate anything good to do for them. Like anything good to do for them, you have to remind them to tell you thank you. You have to remind them to appreciate you. You have to remind them, you have to point it out that they are being unappreciative, then there's no point. Come and be going, okay? Go to where they're going to do more for you. It's okay. You will find people, you can you end up in Dagote's house tomorrow, and Dagote is going to treat you like a funny enough, you might end up in Dagote's house and Dagote will deal with you. That's the point many people don't know. It's not even about how much money you have. The people that you that have so much money, but they they can't they can't see themselves doing something nice for you so it's not about where you who you live with or how much those people have okay so if my house is not okay for you if what i'm doing for you and i feel like i'm doing a lot if it's not enough for you then please go to where you get more please like it's for your own good self to even get more like do you sis or, or i can't i can't hire a brother i want to say do you bra but i can't even hire a man in my house it's not even possible like let's not even go there okay then if they show signs of mental health you know disorders or spiritual problems okay then they need to leave because especially when you have small children it's not something that you want to deal with when you have small children if you know you you have like the capacity to to deal with it then maybe you should it's for their own good for you to help them but for me i don't have that capacity at all i have small children that i'm, I'm looking after and my children are still too small for me to be dealing with someone that has spiritual problem or mental health problem mba, mba, mba. Yeah, so if your spirit does not gel with theirs, okay? If your spirit is fighting them, if their spirit is not... You know what I mean. Like, when somebody that, doesn't, when somebody that does not have a good spirit comes into your home, you feel it. You feel this unrest. If you're a very prayerful person, or if you're a spiritual person and you're prayerful, because some people are so dead spiritually that they don't, they don't feel these things, okay? They're so uh, unattached spiritually, okay? But if you're someone who is spiritually sensitive when someone comes into your house with a spirit that is not good you are going to sense it okay now in the past there are people that i have sensed it but i did not really understand what i was sensing because i wasn't so spiritually attuned okay so i knew that there was something off but i couldn't tell what it was that was off okay the, like the two past ones that were that i finally that finally confirmed that it was a spiritual problem or a mental problem i don't know but those two people, when they came to my house, I felt it in my spirit that something was off with them. It wasn't a malicious thing. Like, okay, for instance, now it wasn't like I felt like they were going to hurt me, but I feel like something was off with them, okay? It wasn't something that was going to hurt me, but it was about them. Something was off with them. I felt it, but I didn't know what it was until, you know, eventually it manifested, okay? So, don't ignore that feeling. Don't ignore... If someone is in your house and anytime the person is around, the mood is dampened, you're not happy, the person is just bringing, bringing a dark cloud into your house, please let them go. No amount of work they do for you is worth it. Let them go, sis, okay? You will find someone better. That's my last point, okay? You are always going to find someone better, okay? Just have it at the back of your mind that the best is always going to come to you. You are always going to get someone better. And if you have that mindset, okay, you won't feel bad letting anybody go. You won't feel bad because I always tell myself, the best is going to come in, going to come to my house, okay? God is going to find the best people for me and it's going to align. Somehow our paths are going to cross and they will get to me, okay? It might take years, it might take months, but they are going to get to me. So it's something I always pray about, okay? And don't be... Don't be afraid to change. Even if you have somebody in your house right now that's working for you and person, you can see that mm, this person is not, things are not going well. Start looking for another person, my dear sister, okay? When that new person resumes, then you chase the old person away or they should both work together for a while then you chase the old person away. So anyway, when I started falling, the weather has been getting very dark. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this topic. Let me know if you have other points to add. You know, how to get the best out of your domestic staff. How to get the best help. Let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all in my next video. Rain, allow me. I have more videos to film today. Respect yourself. Bye. <laughs>